So now, I'm going to review 100 steps to go from startup to your first $1 million in sales that are a summary of the last 10 sections on building a company to a $1 million. First, figure out what change you want to make in the world. Nothing else matters and you should not even be beginning a company until you know personally and professionally the change you wish to make. Then, begin researching the industry and your competitors. Determine how to create your product. Talk to potential customers and users for feedback and come up with a name for your company and product. Those are the first five steps often in many businesses. Next, particularly if you need to raise funding, you want to build your pitch deck just like I talked about in the business planning section, section four. You want to create advanced financial projections that show the next three to five years. It's called a pro forma income statement and a pro forma cash flow statement and balance sheet. You want to determine how much money is necessary to get to cash flow positive by calculating your cash flow break even point. And you want to get feedback on this pitch deck from your mentors, from your advisors, from your friends, from your family. And if you need to find a co-founder whose skills complement your own to help you achieve more, go and start searching for that person. Those are the first 10 steps. Then, when you are ready to incorporate and get some legal advice, find a quality corporate law firm in your area and work with them to incorporate and obtain what's called an employer identification number from the IRS so that you can open a company bank account. Then you want to talk to your attorney about whether, based on your situation, you should make an 83B election, which are often important in significantly reducing your taxes uh, in a very legal way um, by paying your taxes up front when you start a company. Next 15 is that you want to build a basic product prototype. As Eric Ries says, build a minimum viable product or MVP, which has become a very common terminology in startup circles over the past couple years. Step 16 is to begin documenting everything and getting legal agreements in place. You want to have employment agreements, you want to have confidentiality agreements for everyone, both employees and contractors from the beginning. You want to hold your initial board of directors meeting that could just be with yourself or with your maybe two board members that you appoint. And you want to create your restricted stock unit, RSU plan and or your stock options plan that enable you to provide equity ownership and incentives to your employees to gain ownership in the company over time. Often you'll want to vest those options over a period of say four to five years. And then you'll issue your stock certificates to yourself and to your initial founding team. Next you'll fund your bank account with the initial capital contribution either coming from yourself or friends or family or organizations like peer-to-peer -peer lending organizations like Fundable or Kickstarter. And you want to determine if you need outside capital to start. Raise any initial capital you need and get a company debit card and credit card and apply for a corporate credit line if you need to. Set up your accounting software and begin putting in your chart of accounts and select your payroll provider so you can actually pay your employees. Then you'll want to take the step of uh, considering trademarking the names of your company and product. You can talk to your lawyer about that. Designing your logo, creating your business cards, and finding some space to work out of if you need to. Then you'll want to furnish your office, purchase any software or hardware you need, get internet access set up, which is obviously critical in a tech company. Obtain a universal product code, a UPC, if your product is going to be sold in stores, and design any labeling and packaging if needed. Step 36 in these 100 step process is to finish your initial product and bring an alpha version or a prototype to market, regardless of whether it's a tangible product or an intangible software good, and get initial user and customer feedback. Then, when needed, when you're ready, order your initial inventory, register your domain name, design your company website, and you're almost ready to go. You'll want to install a tracking tool like Google Analytics on your website and a shopping cart if you're choosing to pursue e-commerce and get a merchant account if you want to accept credit cards. Then you want to sign up for, and for an email list tool like iContact or MailChimp and optimize your website for the search engines by adding content or adding a blog and getting other websites to link to you. You'll want a tool that can track your customer base and the interactions you have with your customers and your users and you can install a basic CRM tool. And then you're ready to hire your initial staff to be able to begin your operations. You'll want to create your company values and mission statement and you'll want to announce your product launch to local media. And then finally, hold your launch event and start selling. These are the first 50 steps to beginning to be ready to sell your product. The next 50 steps are all about once you start selling, how you begin to build your business to a first million dollars in sales. 
Step 51, hire a team to fulfill your orders and provide customer service. Start an affiliate program or distributor program which enables you to get other people to sell your product for you for a percentage of the sale. And then you want to recruit affiliates and distributors. Set up a system so you can track your advertising and the results and the conversion rates and the cost per lead. And try different online advertising techniques like cost per click advertising with a small test budget. Get some data and then scale up as results warrant. You want to get some results for that advertising, optimize and scale it as needed, and determine the cost of acquisition for a lead, and then determine the conversion rate for each channel, and then combine those to determine the customer acquisition cost by channel, as I talked about during the section on marketing. You want to calculate the lifetime revenue or lifetime value from each customer. Once you know that, you'll know how much you can spend to acquire an incremental new customer, which is critical to being able to scale your business's marketing scientifically. And if you can combine great storytelling with scientific marketing with trackable channels, you can rapidly grow your sales. Now you want to test your marketing and advertising with a bigger budget. Now that you know your lifetime value, you want to test social advertising, display ads, and calculate the return on investment. And you want to scale your advertising up until the marginal cost of customer acquisition is equivalent to the marginal return from that customer acquired. You'll optimize your advertising to bring down your customer acquisition cost, and as you start getting more users and more customers, begin to collect and document testimonials and use cases from those customers, and perhaps even build a few PDF case studies. You'll really want to work to create word of mouth for your product using a tool like Hootsuite or to to, using a tool like Hootsuite to manage what's being said in the media about you and your product and your brand. You might create a YouTube video promoting your product, begin attending conferences and industry events, and consider getting more sales and more initial brand awareness by selling your product in bulk at wholesale. You might at this point start to have some real revenues and real sales and need to bring on a bookkeeper to begin to automate your accounting system and stop doing it yourself. Uh, at this point, once you get beyond a handful of employees, it'll be important for you to create an employee directory. Create a process to begin reviewing your profit and loss or your income statement and your balance sheet monthly. And then take your initial budget that you created before you began and compare that initial pro forma forecast with your actual profit and loss results. And then compare the deltas and talk about them as you create your next iteration of your budget. Eventually, you'll begin creating budgets annually and locking in those budgets and calling those the plan and then comparing actual results on a monthly basis against your annual board approved plan. It might be time now to hire your first salesperson, and that's going to require a sales compensation plan that enables you to pay someone either on a percentage of sales basis or based by paying them based on the units that they deliver by converting customers or upselling customers. You'll probably want to set up some benefits for your employees, like a company health care program, a paid vacation policy, and uh, you might want to begin hiring someone to help manage the office. You want to be continually test, offline, test online advertising while beginning to put some steps in the water around offline advertising, like direct mail, maybe some local radio, and begin to test and get results on that and determine if it works for you. It takes a lot of testing to make your advertising scale. You'll probably want to create an online wiki for your company where you can keep track of your processes and maybe even create a digital company handbook that can be edited and improved by your employees, sort of like a Wikipedia article. You'll also want to open up a credit line with your bank. The best time to go after funding is when you don't need it. And so if things are going well, go ahead and open that credit line. Uh, some of your employees may want to work remotely. And generally, as long as they're getting their work done and able to show up to the meetings you do have, which should be pretty minimal initially, you should be able to enable them to work off-site, maybe a couple days a week. And once you can mathematically show that $1 in means $4 in revenue, you should be going out and raising capital. Until then, bootstrap as much as you can, only raise your initial seed round. Once you have a mathematical model for scalability, then go out and raise this true Series A round of funding if you choose. You want to create a list of firms to raise your Series A from uh, and then update your pitch deck with the new data and new mentors and new team members. Next, you want to build relationships with industry bloggers and different people in the media, seek product reviews, and hire an, e an EA, executive assistant, or an office manager to manage your schedule and manage the business's day-to-day -day tasks. You might want to do an off-site and hold your first company retreat and create a process to, on an ongoing basis, take customer feedback and create a product management process to take your initial alpha and turn it into a beta and then turn it into a general release and incrementally improve through Kaizen as you go. Step 91 is to get connected to investors for, with, from people you know. 
You'll want to have initial get to know you meetings for investor feedback about six to nine months before you're ready to raise capital. Once you have those meetings, you need to under promise and over deliver on your financial and milestone results for the next three to four months and determine how much capital to raise. A good rule of thumb is if it takes is to raise at least twice as much as you're going to need for the next one year of operations. You'll at that point get a sense as to which firms you like and be able to return back. You want to have a disciplined, tight process over the course of 30 to 60 days where you pitch, say, 20 firms that you really like and ideally get down to two or three term sheets. You want to negotiate and sign those term sheets, complete all the diligence requests that come to you from those firms, and then close on your capital. So now, step 101 is to celebrate. You've built a company to a million dollars in sales and raised your Series A round of funding. You now have a business doing over a million dollars, and depending on your revenue multiple, your company might be valued at between one million and twenty million dollars. And you might personally be a millionaire on paper now, but there's a long way between being a paper millionaire and being an actual millionaire and building a company that has significance in the world and that truly enables you to pursue your passion and achieve your dreams and the impact you wish to make. So keep focused on building a great product or providing a world-class service and creating good jobs, giving back to your community, and scaling your ad spend with a scientific eye. Or if you've just been watching this video, you have a lot of work to do. So I look forward to talking more uh, about how to build a company beyond $1 million in sales in the slides ahead. Now, once you get to your first million, you'll have much easier access to the credit and capital you might need for further expansion. And you might have many more customers, enabling you to create much more profitable business. You'll be able to join this organization called the Entrepreneurs Organization, which is a grouping of over 5,000 entrepreneurs around the world running businesses with more than a $1 million in sales. You'll be able to start thinking about your exit strategy and about how to scale your legacy beyond your current venture. There are many, many steps ahead once you get to your first million, but that is the greatest challenge for most entrepreneurs. Congratulations on getting to this point, and I look forward to sharing more in the slides ahead.